Right now, a special live edition of Face the State, an exclusive interview with the Republican-endorsed candidate for governor, Mark Bowden. Can he win? We will talk with Kevin Rennie of the Hartford Current and Colin McEnroe of WNPR. Plus, the first Republican convention Channel 3 covered 60 years ago. It's all straight ahead this Sunday morning, Mother's Day, May 13th, 2018. From Eyewitness News, Connecticut's most watched local political program, this is Face the State. Good morning and thanks for joining us on this Mother's Day. I'm Dennis House. It is the day after, the morning after, the big Republican state convention. And last night, Denver Mayor Mark Bowden won the party's endorsement to be their nominee for governor. But there will be a primary, along with Mayor Bowden. On the primary ballot so far, we have the former first selectman of Trumbull, Tim Herbst, and Westport businessman Steve Absitnik. But the mayor is with us here today. And first of all, congratulations on your victory last night. Well, thanks. It feels good. Look, it was a hard-fought victory. Um, we didn't leave anything. Uh, on, we let, put everything out on the floor and, and uh, have no regrets. And we did great. And I'm so proud of my team and all the hard work that they've done. It was an up-and-down night. Were you nervous at all that it wasn't going to go your way after they went round after round? Uh, I, you know, the numbers were always in our favor from the opening of the convention. You know, we did an excellent, I mean, absolutely. Mark Dillon and I, absolutely outstanding job at tracking every single delegate at a very granular le level. So we knew we had the numbers. It was just the odd question was where those folks go when people start dropping, you know, and, and we had, we thought had made enough outreach to those various camps to be able to get some of those delegates in our fold to get to that 50% level. We knew it wasn't going to be easy. We knew that, you know, there were so many candidates, so many divergent views, so many uh, folks that uh, are engaged in this process that we'd have to work at it. And we put together a coalition to be able to get the nomination. and. Um, I'm excited about that. Uh, I think this is the time for the party uh, to uh, coalesce and, and to begin to move forward. And uh, while I don't, certainly don't uh, object to anybody's right to primary under our, our rules and, and understand that, um, we, if we want to win this seat, have got to work together as Republicans and stop turning, a, uh, our, our, our turning things into a circular firing squad. We have the Republican debate coming up 30 days from today, June 13th, right here at WFSB. Then we have the primary, August 14th. Mm -hmm. So far, two other candidates on the primary ballot. Do you expect more to join? I do. I think we're going to end up five, possibly six people will be on the primary ballot. Who would they be? Uh, I think so. You have, my, obviously, myself as the endorsed candidate. You'll have uh, Tim Herbst, who's qualified. You'll have Steve Upsitnik. Uh, I think Stemmerman and Stefanowski will also uh, do the signature process. I think Mark Loretti will get the signatures, too. The wild card is uh, Mike Handler. He's been working for over a week now and getting signatures, so whether he can do that or not is, is something else. Look, I've been through the signature process. <laughs> it is crazy hard. It's archaic in Connecticut. Every signature you collect has to be witnessed by a resident Republican of that town and submitted to that uh, town clerk in the town. You don't submit them into a centralized location. So it's work. What's your message to them right now? We're here on live television to those potential petitioning candidates. Do you want them to do this? Is it good for the party to do it? It's part of the process. I don't object to the fact that if it's in the rules and if it's in the statute, you certainly can do that. I, I would say, though, we don't do any good by um, trying to destroy each other. And, and that's the only concern that people have with uh, primaries. If this becomes a competition of ideas and vision for Connecticut and how we're going to fix our problems, I think that's a good thing. That highlights and showcases all of our Republican talent. If this turns into who can send out the worst, nastiest flyer on the other one, um, then we're going to devolve into a mudslinging contest. But I'm going to tell you something. Through the entire run-up here, for the last 18 months, I have practiced not speaking negatively about other people in this race, and I will continue to do that. Um, I have to be able to wake up in the morning and know that I've treated other people fairly and honestly, and frankly, I've got a new perspective on life as well uh, through some of the challenges I've personally been through. So, I mean, it's not going to come from me. I want to talk about your health a second because you mm -hmm. just brought it up. Sure. How is your health, and should voters be concerned that perhaps you might have another episode? No, no. I, I Look, I'm strong as a bull. I'll, I'll do push-ups right here on the floor if you want. All <laughs> Whatever right. we got to do. Um, uh, I feel great, um, and uh, we're good to go. I, I wouldn't be in the race if any one of my doctors, uh, my team especially, said, hey, you can't do this. I wouldn't be here. I, I certainly wouldn't put the state through that, and certainly my own personal self wouldn't do that. Um, but I'm healthy. Um, I've hired a nutritionist. I'm exercising more. I'm doing the things that I probably should have done five years ago, So, and I'm feeling probably as best as I've ever felt. You understand the concern, though, that people have? I think it's a fair question. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a fair question. And, you know, people have raised it at town committee meetings and other meetings, and I'm, fair, I'm happy to share that. Look, here's one thing I can tell you. First of all, you know I have a brain. You've seen it up on the screen at our press conference. The most photographed uh, brain uh, in the race. Yeah. Unlike other 
unlike other potential leaders around who may not have a brain, I have one. So um, I can verify that, and folks can certainly ask me any question they want about it. I've opened up my medical records. I have no problem doing that. You said you're not going to say anything negative about the other candidates. Right. Yet you really have to convince people that you're a better candidate than That's Tim right. Herbst and a better candidate right. than Steve Epstein. What is the argument? Well, the argument is, is that uh, we have to be able to uh, nominate people that have, have demonstrated ability to win in an urban area. Danbury is not. A Republican city. It's a Democratic city. We're 40 percent Latino. We have 50 uh, percent of our children live below the poverty line. We are a blue-collar working city, typical of Connecticut and of, the, of our industrial base. And I've gotten elected there nine times, a city of 90,000, where 25,000 people come in every day to work. This is a complex organization with 49 different languages spoken at our high school. This isn't a small suburban town. Um, that maybe, uh, uh, you know, I struggled, even, a person struggled to lead there. This isn't somebody who has experience in some other industry that now is running and saying, do this. I run a complex operation in the public arena, uh, dealing with public policy every day, so the experience I have is invaluable. I fought the battles, up and down, good and bad, and I've been proud to uh, achieve great metrics using Republican policies and Republican ideas. You might be faced with, you know, the argument that perhaps they should go with a fresh face, maybe a business outsider like a Charlie yeah. Baker in Massachusetts. Yeah. That might come from David Stemmerman or perhaps Steve Absitnik. What's your yeah. response to that? Uh, look, my response is that um, this is a competition of ideas, and it's, it's a marketplace of ideas. And so I'm certainly willing to share ideas with them. But I think the difference for me, having legislative experience as well, I know the process in Hartford. I can understand in, to, how to work with our state representatives and state senators because it is an incremental process that will pull your hair out if you don't understand it vastly different than the business world, where you can just make decisions and do it. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to get your thoughts on the Democrats and the lieutenant governor candidates as well when we come back. And you can also watch past interviews of Face the State and this one at 1130. It'll be online on WSB.com or on our YouTube channel. We'll be right back.